When making the jump from can foam to a professional foam applicating gun, there's a few things that you need to know in terms of care and how to use it. When it comes to using foam, I'm always going to go for a foam gun for a number of reasons. One of which is I have the most bead control. So I can go from a quarter inch bead to a three inch bead anywhere in between with just a turn of a knob. The second reason is I have the ability to stop instantaneously by releasing the trigger. You're going to have more yield because you're using the exact amount of foam that you need and you're going to keep a cleaner job site. The last and most important reason is that you have the ability to use a can throughout a month's time. So if you only use a quarter of it or the full can, you're gonna have the same performance on day one that you are on day 30. So a couple of things I look for when choosing a gun, solid build. This is the Pro 14 model by Great Stuff. Largely constructed of metal, long, smooth barrel, so it's easy to clean. This one has a dual finger trigger, so it's gonna be easy to actuate. And this is one of the most important things, the top of the gun here, the cage where the can screws onto, this is metal. Sometimes when these guns are placed down on the job site, if somebody were to step on that by accident, a metal barrel is gonna be a lot stronger withstand bending. This gun has a two finger trigger, which I prefer for two reasons. One of which is that it allows you to wear gloves and it's not gonna be choked up on the trigger there. Secondly, you can use two fingers, which you're gonna be applying foam back and forth, back and forth on the trigger here. So two fingers is definitely less fatiguing than just using one finger. On the back of the gun, there's this dial that adjusts the trigger throw. So by turning that dial clockwise, what you do is lock out the trigger, and then you can adjust by turning it counterclockwise how much you want that trigger to throw. So when you pull the trigger, it's actually moving the needle at the tip, and then that starts the flow of foam. Step one should always be safety glasses, and we're gonna wear some gloves because foam is very sticky, and you don't want this on your skin. If you had the can outside in the winter, say you're applying some foam in the winter and the can is cold, bring the can in and allow it to sit to warm up to room temperature. This is really important because a cold can will not expand properly, the foam will not dispense properly. So an important thing to note with attaching the can to the gun is that you really want to commit and screw it on in one shot. If you go slowly, there's a chance that foam could be sprayed out of the cage. So we're going to commit and screw this on in one shot. So that's it, the gun is now attached to the can. Make sure that you're shaking the foam right before application, which will actually help it dispense. I like to hold underneath the cage with my pinky finger so that I'm supporting the gun and the can at the same time. So to use the gun, I'm gonna take it out of the storage position. That's where the trigger is locked. To unlock the trigger, there's a knob on the rear that you're gonna loosen and then that will free up the pin that travels down the barrel. One turn counterclockwise and lay a small bead. Two turns counterclockwise, bead starts growing. So the more that you loosen this knob on the rear, the larger your bead gets. Just make sure that you clean the tip after each use. This foam by Great Stuff is designed for larger gaps, so anywhere from one to three inches. This is your high expansion, high yield foam. Great Stuff also has a low expansion polyurethane foam with low pressure for around windows and doors. So this is where you're gonna spray it around the jam to block both air and moisture. And this is for use around wires, pipes, ductwork, that sort of thing, bottom of baseboards, your general gap filling. When you're applying foam, a lot of people have a tendency to drag the tip along the surface, which is fine, but you really have to make sure that you're not dragging the tip against rough surfaces such as concrete or some steel because that's actually the valve at the end of the tip there. So if you drag that against a rough surface and damage the valve, not only will the gun leak, the foam inside the barrel will cure and you won't be able to clean it up. A tip during application is you always want to try and keep that can as vertical as possible. Now that may not always be ideal, especially working up in tight areas around ceilings. So to combat that problem, they've included these gun tips. The gun tips slide over the end of the nozzle and they allow you to attach a piece of tubing or a straw that you can bend up to get into those tight spots while still keeping the can vertical. So how do you know when it's time to change the can? You're gonna have two telltale signs. The can's gonna get a lot lighter. Obviously you've expelled that product. And the second is that your beads aren't gonna be as large as they once were. It's really simple. Unscrew the can, 
You're gonna have a little bit of foam that's gonna escape around the nozzle, not a problem. You take your gun cleaner, spray that, it's gonna dissolve the foam. And then you have a new can here. You're gonna spin that on, the can is swapped. You can't unscrew a partially used can and then reliably restart it. You can spray that with the foam cleaner, but the problem is that that valve's gonna get jammed up. If you find yourself needing to switch between a number of products, it's better to dedicate a product to a gun and have multiple guns. You can leave the can attached to the gun for up to 30 days if you have a partially used can. If the can is fully expelled and you're ready to flush the gun, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So step one would be to unscrew the partially used can or the empty can. You're gonna have a little bit of foam escape the top of the gun here. So I'm gonna spray that to clean it up. Give it a wipe. And then now I'm going to screw on the gun cleaner. So with the gun cleaner attached, you can dispense a bit of that gun cleaner into a bucket or a garbage can. When you see the stream start like that, flush it again. You're gonna leave a little bit in the nozzle to dissolve the remaining foam for about five to 10 minutes. Give it one more blast. Once you see the stream is clear, you can close the valve at the rear and then flip the gun over. You also wanna make sure that the tip is clean. So we're gonna take our gun cleaner, spray a little bit on a rag, and then wipe the tip. While you're doing that, make sure that the end of the tip has no debris caught in it. So you want that tip to be absolutely clean.